Hi, I'm Rachel Blake. I'm an intern with the Office of Sustainability at San Jose State University. Today I'll be reviewing the process of how I take food waste and instead of putting it in the trash can and having it go to the landfill, I take it and I put it in my freezer in a bag and then I bring it to my in-laws house and put it in their compost bins. This is one of the containers that I use to put food waste in at my freezer. So all I do, usually our biggest source of food waste is coffee grounds at my house. So instead of emptying the basket into the trash can, I empty it into this container and then put it in the freezer. This is an example of what one of my frozen containers of compost looks like. So when I go over to my in-laws house, I just come over to two of these composting bins and we alternate. So I always come after the gardeners come to their house, they put the grass clippings and then it'll melt and I come back after I work in our garden beds. Over time, what happens is that it creates dirt at the bottom and then this is just a compost system that works for our family and works for us and when we're planting in our garden beds we get to pull new soil from this instead of buying something from a bag from a store. This is what we use our soil for. You don't have to go this extreme but I didn't like tomatoes until I grew my own. Yay! If you're unable to bring your compost to a yard like this or to a family's yard or you live in an apartment, that's okay. You can always drop off your compost at the AS Campus Community Garden across the street from the Dining Commons. Hi everyone, so I'm spending a lot of time this summer in Arizona where I get to learn more about how we're using solar panels to conserve energy. And what that looks like for my family is that we have solar panels located on top of our house, but we get to locate and track how much energy we are currently using. And to do that, we have a little app and it tells us right now how much energy is being taken in by the solar panels. And up top, it says we're using 10.2 kilowatts of energy, but our house is currently only using 3.8 kilowatts. And so what happens to the rest is that that 6.4 goes back to the grid to be stored, almost like a bank account for our energy. And so we get to use that energy at a later time, maybe if it's later in the summer and we need more AC than usual, we get to use that energy without spending more of it. One of the biggest ways that I conserve energy in my home is by operating under what's called peak hours. And the peak hours where I currently live are going to be Monday through Friday from 3 to 8 p.m. And so during those times, I won't be using my dishwasher, my clothes dryer or washer, or I will try to refrain from using my AC and fans as much as possible because during those times, it takes a lot more energy to run these appliances than they do other times of the day. So by refraining from using them, I'm using a lot less energy as well as saving money. The next way I'm conserving energy in my home this summer is by using power strips. Currently, I have my lamp, my couch, and another appliance plugged in, but since we're not using the living room right now, we don't need that energy, so we get to turn off the power strip. And when we want to use it later in the day, we get to turn it on and it powers all of them at the same time, but until then, we're gonna conserve a little bit of energy and not use those right now. Here's one simple way to reuse water that you would have poured out otherwise. You can place leftover ice cubes or any water remains onto a plant that needs watering. To reduce your shower time, you can curate a playlist of two to three songs that add up to about five to 10 minutes. When you hear the last song, you'll know how long you have left to shower. If you want a challenge, you can change the playlist to new songs every time you shower that add up to the desired shower time. Here are some tips to promote your health and well-being while staying at home. First off, I like to use water filtration system like Brita instead of buying bottled water. I prefer filter water over bottled water because I want to limit my exposure to BPA, phthalates, and plastic in general. By simply switching to a water filtration system, you can replace up to 1800 plastic water bottles in a single year. Next, I like to take care of my body and make time to unwind by exercising, practicing meditation or yoga in the morning, or doing other activities that I enjoy. Hi everyone, so if you're interested in learning more tips on how to optimize your home office sustainability while saving money at the same time, then we highly recommend checking out our Green Home Office Challenge that is currently live and running until August 31st. So 
What is the Green Home Office Challenge? It's basically a free online survey that offers staff, faculty, and students the ability to self-audit your home office space, implement sustainable practices to reduce on your environmental footprint, and save on your energy and water bills. At the end of the challenge, the top 10 departments, student organizations, or offices with the most participation will be recognized for the Taya's Participation Award. Um, so we highly encourage you to share the survey with all of your colleagues and your members to not only increase your chance of winning, but also to challenge themselves to become more sustainable. Now I'm going to show you how to access our Green Home Office Challenge Survey. As you can see on our flyer right here that is available on all of our social media platforms, there is a QR code on the bottom that you can easily scan with your smartphone. Or if you would like to, you can type into this link into your computer browser. So bit.ly slash SGSU Green Home Office and it should direct you to this page right here. On the top part of the first home page, there is an overview of what the challenge is about. And on the bottom, it gives you some instructions on how to go through each of the four sections that we have. So let's move on to the next page that we have here. It will ask you for a couple information. And then after that, you can move on to the first part of our survey. So for instance, let's go through the first question together. It will ask you through whether or not you've been staying current with the COVID-19 information and its impact on a workplace environment and how to protect yourself and others. So if yes, you can select the spots. Underneath each of the questions that we have, it will have a how-to or a did you know information where it will provide you with more information and resources on each of the questions. <music> bit different this is the innovation items where this is your chance to describe any other sustainable actions that you've taken or practices that you've adopted which have not been covered by the other sections yet and like that you're done with the survey thank you everybody for listening and we hope to see you in our next video